told the Israelites, you shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. Who told them you should not bear false witness? Who was that? God. God, right? The Ten Commandments. Now, I want you to pretend that you're a first century Jew sitting around Jesus, listening to him say those words that we heard in the Gospel. And basically, what the Jew at that time would have heard, God told you, do not kill, but I tell you. Think of that, those words. God told you, do not commit adultery, but I tell you. Any Jew at that time would have been scandalized by the words of Jesus. He's going against God. He's making himself even above God. God told you this, but I'm telling you this. No prophet spoke this way. The prophets would say, Thus says the Lord. But not Jesus. He says, I tell you. That's how the words of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, that's how radical they were at the time of Jesus and still for us. And yet, we don't see the depth of those words. We don't see what Jesus really is trying to do. You know, the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew is like Jesus' first public address. It's like speech laying out the plan for his kingdom. And here he's telling the people, God told you this, but I tell you this. Well, number one, Jesus trying to tell them who he is. He's beginning to reveal his identity. I am the Son of God. And he's not predicting what God has told them. Jesus is not saying, okay, you can kill, but don't be angry. Jesus is trying to take them even deeper in understanding the spirit of the law. Third people don't wake up one day and say, you know, today I'm going to go kill someone. Or today, you know, I'm going to go commit adultery. It starts in the heart with anger, with thoughts of maybe revenge, with anger, with thoughts of maybe I've been treated unjustly, with lust in the heart. That would lead the people to act on their feelings. And Jesus is saying, we need to go beyond the externals. Most of the people listening to Jesus, most of the people sitting here today, I hope everyone has not killed anybody. So, uh, you know, that's easy to check that box. I'm on my way to have that. <clears throat> Jesus is calling us to look internally at who we are and what's going on inside of us. And that's why the Gospel starts by Him saying, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and the scribes. You know, the Pharisees and the scribes, they focused so much on the externals. They worried about, you know, washing their hands before eating, washing the pots and pans, and what to eat and what not to eat. And yet, they did not have compassion or mercy to those who were in need. Remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. The priest walks by and this person may injured, you know, on the side of the road, but nobody touches them because they become impure. And they say, well, I'm following the law. That's what Jesus is calling us to. He's calling us to live authentic lives. To really know what makes us tick, what's going inside of us before those feelings, those desires are translated into actions that are serious. How is that Jesus not saying, well, you should be angry at all. Anger is a feeling. Any feeling is okay. They're neutral. They might lead us to bad things, but also they can lead us to good things. If I'm angry because I've seen an injustice, maybe a man beating a woman in the street, I get angry, that's good if it leads me to call the police. But it's bad if it leads me just to ignore it and keep walking on, you know, I don't want to get involved. But it's important for us to begin to know why I get angry. Why I have no patience with my spouse or my kids or with the people on the freeway. Why I get angry so easily. Why I'm always upset. That's what Jesus is calling us to, to look deeper into 
to ourselves and to find out what's going on inside of us. What makes us making us act this way? But the problem with this is we really are afraid to dig deeper into our soul. We're afraid because the devil has convinced us that, you know, if you start going deep, you're not going to like what you see. You're a bad person. You look at your actions. Why do you want to look any deeper into yourself? You're not a good person. You do all of these things. We believe the lie of the devil. That we are not good. And that's why we don't want to discover ourselves. We stay on the surface. Oh, on the surface, I look good. You know, I go to Mass on Sunday. I put my envelope in the basket. I receive the sacrament. But really, what's going on inside of us? Remember last Sunday's Gospel? I hear you you're saying yes. <laughs> Before Jesus talks about this, Jesus told us something very important last Sunday. Something that's true, something to contradict the lie of the devil. Jesus did not say, you're bad people. He said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. That's who we are. We are light, we are soft, we are good because God created us in His image and God is good. But yes, sometimes we act badly. Not because we're bad, not because we're damaged, but because the devil convinces us that you are, you have no hope, you know, that's the way you are, you're selfish. To make that journey inwardly in us, to get to discover really what's going on with me. First we have to believe our true identity, just like Jesus had to believe that truly He is the Son of God. We have to believe that we are good. The deeper we dig in, we kind of take out until all of those, you know, darkness of sin that has engulfed us, till we finally reach to our core. And our core is the light, the light of Christ. After Mass, I think this is the day we're going to be baptized, right? And she will receive a candle to remind her this is the light of Christ that's in you, that you are alive. And it's up to us, her family and friends, her parish community, to help our children grow up to know they are light, they are good. They have the potential to change the world. And how can we change the world if we don't believe in ourselves? That's what Jesus is telling us about this kingdom and those who live in this kingdom who are part of that kingdom. It starts by us knowing we are truly alive in this world. Because Christ is the light who lives in us. And we have to let this light shine through us. And that's why we have to get rid of those of that sin that kind of obscures this light in our lives. And when we believe we are light, that we can believe that yes, I can make a difference. I can make this world a better place. I can make my family a better family, my workplace, my community, myself. By beginning to know what's going on with me. Not to be afraid to dig deeper into my heart, into my mind, and ask God to help me, to guide me, to give me the hope and the confidence that I can change. Jesus has set us free, free from our sexual desires, free from our selfish desires, free from our, you know, uh, love for money desires. He has set us free from all of this. But we choose yet to live as slaves to those things. Because we do not believe that we are truly alive. The words of the Sermon of the Mount are really meant to be radical words. The total change, total transformation. 
of what the people are used to, of what the world tells us, the wisdom of the world tells us you should be. So, here what I'm going to propose that you do between now and a week from Wednesday when we begin the season of Lent. The first thing I would like you to do is to sit down maybe two, three times, or you can do it in one time, and read the whole of the Sermon of the Mount. Read the whole three chapters in Matthew. Because that's when Jesus lays out his vision. And just like we heard in the first reading, God is laying out, look, this is my wisdom, this is the wisdom of the world. It's your choice. Choose one of them to live by, to follow. And like any choice, there's consequences. First, we have to buy into the vision of God. A vision that Jesus not just proclaimed in words, but lived in deeds. And we want to have that will, that desire. Yes, Lord, I want to live that way. Help me to become that life. So that's number one. Number two, as I said, Lent is starting, and then we have that tradition, the practice, oh, I want to give up something, or I want to do something extra. And a lot of times, it's external things. Just like, you know, the Pharisees worrying about what food should I eat and what food I shouldn't eat. After reading the Sermon on the Mount, take a few minutes and begin to think, what can I do for this man? Something that's not going to change you externally, but really internally. Maybe you need more time in prayer. So you can know more what really God, where God wants, what God wants you to do, or where He's leading you. Maybe you need to do this, they just realize that instead of giving up chocolate or coffee, God wants you to give up pornography. Or God maybe wants to give you, you to give up your impatience. Your anger. Begin to think about it. Well, why, why am I angry? What do I need to do to become more patient? Whatever seems to be controlling you, those desires that may be enslaving you, take one of them and say, how can I change that? How can I overcome that obstacle? How can I live as a free child of God? Not controlled by my anger, not controlled by my impatience, not controlled by my fears. How can I be a more honest person? To be truly who God created me to be. When we begin to do this, not just our lives will change, but the lives of the people around us will begin to change. They begin to see this person becoming different, he's acting different, he's saying different things. And begin to see the transformation that you have already experienced and experienced. That's what Jesus is calling us to. Don't just let the external of things, the letter of the law, okay, I gotta give up something, I'll do something to give it up. But live the letter of the law. The letter of the law that calls us to be transformed into who God made us to be, a light to this world. 